Welcome everybody to the first of the army creation videos. And one of the first steps to creating an army is to have a solid base. And this is the first unit that we're going to base here. So we've got, I think this is, well I'm just going to call them Dark Elves because that's what I know them as. I'm just changing the focus a little bit right there. You can see that we've got, this is my traditional basing method here is the cork and sculpey and I've used one of these green stuff world dark runes texture rollers right here in order to get this texture that you see right here on this base see there's a lot of nice variety to this pattern there is several that I could have chosen. I could have even just gone with flat white Scopey. But I'm going to get something that I can point with right here. There's just all these nice little different elements. Each one of these, you know, if you just have this on your base, you have something that's a lot different than this. If you go half and half, this and half of the runes over here. So with just this one roller, you can get a lot of different bases, even a little isolated block over here. So that's why I like these rollers because, again, while I can paint on texture, draw it in, you can really have a lot of fun with these. So here's an even bigger sheet. So you can see how big these sheets can be rolled out. And as we go through this video, we're going to break up these sheets. See, they're not terribly thick. Look at that, pretty darn thin. You can achieve that with these roller guides right here. And I'm going to take you to the Green Stuff World site. So here we go. Here's the texture rollers, and you can see the dark runes right there, kind of in the middle. There's a variety of pins also. So we're going to go back here. This is actually one of the most important pins that I have. And it's actually a clear see through pin. The idea is you roll out your Sculpey mostly flat first, get it all set, and then you go over it with your texture roller. I'm going to try and do a sample piece in a second. I just want to show you some of the other tools that are involved here. These are fairly basic. They're not expensive at all. These wood carving tools come in sets of anywhere between 10 to 14. These come in sets anywhere 2 to 4. You can see this little pick right there. You have something you can sort of slice away at your base, maybe shave away some of the base. These are different shapes. You have a flat one here, one on a nice angle, this 90 degree angle one, there's an even smaller one. These are really handy, especially when you want to carve in texture, say like this. So I've got kind of a wood grain thing here. So this is, again, a flat piece of Sculpey. So we're going to be, for right now, working with the textured Sculpey. Any kind of clips like this, again, for breaking the Sculpey, you've got your clip there. You'll need that for your paper clips, because that is how this is attached to the base. You can see it's got paper clip right there. It means we can have it on this little dowel rod right here. We can paint it and get all this stuff underneath and get at certain parts without having to worry about hitting the base. Again, it's just a simple paper clip, but what you will want to do is make sure that it matches up to the size of your drill bits, and that's a key thing. A couple of different types of cork that we're going to use, and we'll go over this as it happens. We're going to be using some sand and gravel. We're also going to be painting these bases. That's going to be sort of in the second half slash third of this video. Usually use a cheaper basic super glue for this phase. You can use wood glue. I like this glue also because it's almost about as strong as wood glue, but it dries quickly. So I think we're going to use that because speed is kind of important here. So you'll notice ceramic tile right here. That's another key element that we're going to talk about. And this, the Sculpey. 
This is gray extra firm. And I do suggest if you're not going to use this as quickly as I do, you can put this in maybe a sealable baggie, even wrap it in saran wrap, something like that, just to it keeps it from drying out because it can dry out over time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some, well, I've got my oxide paste here. We'll probably be using some of that. See along these edges here. So I'm going to show you a quick little basic of rolling, and then we'll start making a few bases. And we're going to get to that next. All right, let's roll out a little bit of this gray extra firm Sculpey. This is what I always prefer, not the, the pink Sculpey or the terracotta, not the white. Again, the white one has a different purpose. It's much more fragile. It's easy to carve. It's also easy to break. This gray extra firm, I really enjoy it. So what you have to do is you have to really work this here with your hands. you got to get all of these... See, I get all these little cracks and such out of here. You want to have this be sort of a smooth surface. Now, if you want a big sheet like mine, you're going to obviously have to use a relatively big piece. If your fingers are strong enough, you know, you handle this more, it gets a little bit warmer. See, I've already started, started to flatten it out a bit. I'm not going to do this too rough because the table's going to shake and the camera's going to shake. Remember our clear roller right here. Now I just start to roll this out, and I start to flatten it out, and just sort of like a like bread dough here, or a pie crust, or whatever you want to call it. See, it's starting to roll out and flatten out, and I've got myself a sheet here that's pretty much rolled out. And you said I took I flip it over here. I don't want to get it too thin because if I get it too thin, it's going to be tougher to have a texture. Now you're going to notice I've got kind of a tail on this here. There's a reason for that. See how I press this down again. It's going to shake the camera a little bit. And I notice is as I would roll this, even with these roller guides, pick this up and it would just start rolling over itself. And that's no good. We don't want that. Now if I made my sheet wide enough, like I did here, you can see I caught basically the entire texture. Caught the whole texture here. So here, and I'm just going to make sure that I've got my focus set to this, just so you can see it. There we go. I pick, let's say I want to make sure I have this texture and this. And I'm going to set it off to the side here a little bit. I'm going to press with both hands. And you've got to press pretty hard. You want to make sure that you're pressing hard with both hands equally. Again, sorry if the camera shakes a little bit. Don't want to go too fast because what you're going to do is just have this thing slide across. So look at that. You can see we've pretty well mirrored our sheet here that we've got. Now this, you can see this sheet's a little bit thicker. If you want your, let's say you want something that's more like this thick. And you can see you've got a thicker ring here. It's it's up to you. It's what your needs are. I tend to prefer less scopey because I, I love using my cork method. So I can pull this off here, and sometimes I have to just stretch it a little bit. See here, make sure that's a circle. So that is all set for baking, and I'm going to bake it right here. I mean, right here on this ceramic tile. It doesn't matter what color it is or anything like that. That's I, I try to have ones that have minimal amounts of texture. This is a little bit of a tooth to it, but hey, no big deal. So that's rolling your Sculpey into these sheets. Again, here's another sheet that's really, really thick. Now, I also have, you'll notice, I have scraps is from a previous base. That would be these guys here, my sample bases. I always keep these because you never know when they're going to come in handy. And you're going to see that, especially when we get to this next stage. 
So remember I was telling you about our blocks cork. This is bulletin board cork and has a slightly different property than this. This is it's more cork that you would say put under a planter to keep uh, your wooden shelf or dresser or whatever you've got your plant sitting on safe. See, it's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit more resilient. It's got a tighter grain. You're going to see this is more loose. I got a spare piece here. See how it, it breaks up easier. But this also has see, these wonderful little pieces like this make fantastic rocks. So you can make an entire base just out of this, really. it's There's so many different options that you can use. So let's break out a few tools here. It, again, you don't need lots and lots and lots of tools. So sometimes all I use is the knife. But I'm going to break out a few of these just so you can maybe see these, see these in use. So let's you know, break out a few bases, and I'm also going to have a few of the other figures out because it's important to see what the footprint is. And you're going to see on each one of these, this one is, is definitely a little bit bigger. You can see that. Then this one is. This one's a little bit tighter. You can see how this one fits on this base. Pretty snug, but it's not overhanging very much. It can obviously go base to base contact. And we'll, when we get into making the bases themselves, so these are totally playable. I know people say you can't play with those, they're not going to go base to base. Guess what? Look at this. Even here, they can go base to base. And you'll notice that each shape is generally somewhat triangular. Another thing you got to think about too, especially when you have this much texture and these many designs. You have to think, so if this thing sits on here, a lot of this is going to get covered. This is It's about army design, and army design comes in many different phases. And this is one of them. You have to figure out just how much of this base do you want to show. This is a, yeah, I could put this on a smaller, taller base like this, but if I go smaller and wa shorter and wider, now I can have more of this design show. So maybe this one's not bad. For that base, you know, this one, it's it's longer and narrower. Maybe I use this and I have the base extend out a little bit because, I mean, it's also about supporting this miniature here. So let's, I think that we've got all of ours out here. So what I'm going to do is gather up the materials and we're going to make ourselves some bases to fit the rest of our unit. And we're going to get into our different materials, and we'll see you in the next phase. So now we're going to make bases for these three, and they each have a different footprint. So this one, it's, it's relatively compact, but it touches at three points. These two are a little bit broader, but they only, you can see they have two contact points here. Now one other thing that I want to bring up is that I always save scraps because you end up with pieces like this that are usually see this will work good on a say a 30 millimeter base or whatever so I always have several containers of scrap pieces even scrap pieces of the smaller cork so I always have those around. You never know when they might come in handy. These are 50 millimeter round bases. So let's make sure that we've got the focus all set for you here. That's better. And let's think about the footprint of this. So obviously something like this, this piece, this little chunk that I've got right here, it's probably better or something like that. See how that just kind of matches? Here we go. See how that kind of matches the curve of the miniature itself? So I think that's one that's going to work pretty well. 
Let's do that. Now you can see as I put it on the base here, a couple of things happen. You can see there's a little bit of an overhang. Now if you don't want to have that much overhang, see we can break some of that away. Let's break some of it away here. We can break some of this away. So now you've got a little less overhang. It fits on the base a little bit better. Now you've got options for a few things. So here I just went this higher level and then just stuck some scopy on the base. You could again with some of your scrap pieces here. And, and I may just do this cuz why not? This is a I'm trying to do about 3 4 different types of base. So we do something like this. Now we've got two levels. And we got two different levels here. So maybe we're going to set that aside. So we just we're planning out different bases. Now let's do one that's maybe for this one. And there's one that's sort of a unit champion. So that's why another reason I like to put my unit champions or whatever on tower bases. So I, I just broke off a piece of this. Again, I don't necessarily need that overhang unless we're going to put this on here. So I'll say, all right, we've got this one done. So I'm just going to line them up like so. So here's another Thing. Let's not let's not do another tall one here. Let's just stick with these shorter ones. But this is also another option. Mm, let's see. Yeah, that's a long one here, so we're gonna do that. So this one it has its three contact points. You can see they're kind of in a triangle shape. Well, this is already sort of a triangle shape. I can do a few things. Say if I center it here, I can maybe put some scraps of this on either side if I go here I have I could put skulls down here I could do whatever right let's try this now we've got our piece of scopy here this is really the the trickiest part is you have this nice big sheet of scopy in every part when you go to break this every single scrap part of every every piece of this is going to look oh I really wish I could save that and I wish I could keep that it's just it's not always possible not always possible so what I'm going to do is figure out something like this so I say to myself yeah this is a natural break point here right here but now I'm going to lose I lose a bunch of that design because I'm not going to have a lot of overhang. Let's see if I set it over here like this. So this is the design I'm going to have. I'm going to have the skull right here with these radiating little spikes out of it and some of the runes. But this one's also going to cover a little bit more of the base. So I'm thinking I might just go for runes on this one. What I'm going to do is actually try and break it here. A couple of different ways you can do that. I'm just going to use my hands right here. You could score it with a knife to break it. Let's see. What I can do is See how that relatively fits? Got a little overhang here. Do the same thing right here. And just pop this. But guess what? I still have this piece. Oh, look. I could still put it right there if I want. But again, a lot of it's going to be covered. But you know what? I'm going to go for it. I actually like this piece better. So this is something you have to be willing to accept. This is this is going to happen when you're doing this. You say, oh, maybe I like this better. So we can do that. And if I've got 
See, I've got another little chunk right here that's left over. Guess what? I can break this. And now I've got myself a multi-level multi version. So we're going to set that one aside because we've got that one kind of figured out. So in all the previous base building videos that I've done, it's all been one-of-a-kind type bases. I've never really done this, how I show how I try to plan these things out. So again, here's one that's long, narrow, doesn't have the biggest footprint in the world. So it's, it's a good candidate for one of these two designs. But looking at what I've got, I've already got one of these right here. Now, sometimes I like to just preserve so if I have a big old piece like this, sometimes I try to break that piece off and maybe use something like this. See where the, it's, it's tighter in. But let's, let's just go ahead and snap this off. Sometimes you just have to be bold. I'm going to use this as sort of a measuring stick here, and we have to decide how much of this part of the design or this. Because, we, again, we can have a little bit of overhang, but we don't want tons of overhang. And what I'm going to actually do is go like this. I'm going to follow that line. And if I snap it here, that's going to give me a little bit more. I could probably make a whole other base out of it. But remember, we've got something like this. Now what this can do, take it, so maybe I can break off smaller pieces. Let's see what the maybe a little more control. Like I said before, always save these because we could, we could put this here. I sort of like that too. So where were we here? Now we've got this, and we have to figure out how we're going to break this. Again, I could use this tool, but I think I can do a better job with my hands. I'm going to go like so. And that was good enough. And I'm going to break this here. I'm going to use this let's see maybe I even grab my little players here like so snip off those pieces so again now we've got ourselves a nice platform and we're going to be cutting this down also let's see how we've off centered this too we don't want this targeted dead set in the middle because composition is a big deal so we want to make sure that we've got a good balance on each of our bases here. Now this one, it's a little more complex to plan out, but oh look, we've even got a piece that darn near fits that. We could just go with runes here. So let's do that. We've got a piece of runes. We have to choose which, which piece, because this one actually is not too bad either. And this one actually, it's, it's got a little variety to it, so I'm actually going to go with this one. So this one I can save, clearly make a whole other base out of it. Got other little pieces here, other little scraps that we can use. Now this is like I'm going to set it aside, just kind of get it out of the way. Just getting some stuff out of the way. And we're going to move into that next phase. So again... Even this has different, you can see this is slightly different texture than this. So this one's got a little more particles to it. This has a little bigger chunks. So each one of these is going to yield a different type of texture. So let's start off with this one. Now you can see I've got an overhang here. If I'm comfortable with that overhang, hey, that's fine. I actually like that overhang. I'm just going to do it so you can see what that's like. But see how there's this regular edge here? All along this, a little too, a little too fine. Couple of ways. See, how I'm just snipping away at this, just chopping away, uh, taking away little chunks like this. That's one way to do it. My typical way 
is with the X-Acto knife. You can see I use the Scopey itself as kind of a protector for my thumb. I'm not doing this. And watch how, see how I rock this back and forth. And see how that creates an irregular edge here? And sometimes I go with what I see. Let's see how this I've, I've exposed more of the top. Now, more of the bottom. Sometimes, see, I just go like this and that just smooths it down. But wherever I see something that's way too straight, I'm just trying to break that away. So if you're not comfortable with that, there's a couple other different tools here. So I've got this tool. See, I've got it pointed away from myself. And you can see how it's just peeling away a little bit, but it's making this a really, really tight, irregular edge. I've got this. It's a little bit like the X-Acto knife, but it's it's a carving tool. So it's kind of it's a little more designed for this. See how that the smaller blade yields a finer cut here. So all I'm trying to do is just sort of ding this up a little bit. And usually, so I've got this like so. I hold it like this, and I say, how much overhang? do I want? Just how much overhang do I want? I'm going to set this down, set him aside. Let's get into here. Now this, you can see this is where I, I rolled the edge. Now this I certainly want to get rid of. Definitely want to get rid of all this. Here we go. Let's pop some of this away. And again, thinking about chipping away some on the top, some on the sides here. Set that down. I've even got a piece here that I'm going to save here and make a little crack out of that. But guess what? I've got to get rid of this. So I'm sorry if it's hard for you guys to see sometimes. It's just it's it's where it's easier for me to actually grab a hold of it. So here I'm gonna do the same thing. Make this less regular. Get rid of any straight lines. Put this over here. We got the last one. So we'll show you this again. So let's Take our piece, put it over the top, and we chip away. Now, normally I do this with a jeweler's block, but I just I'd have to be changing the focus way too often. So, for just the sake of being able to keep it more on one focus and not have to bounce back and forth, I'm just going to do things. And see how I try to use. The piece of Sculpey itself is effectively as a guard for my fingers. So I set this down. I'm going to do the same thing here. And it really, think of, think of what we did. We Pretty much every base has a piece of scrap on it. And there's even one base where we're using not even the original piece that we cut for it. So there we go. We've got three bases all very different they're different than the first two different designs we've got here we'll, we'll change speaking of focus we're going to change this a little bit here so you can see that different designs different levels multiple levels on each one so what I'm going to do is clean this up here a little bit I'm going to glue this together we're going to use our oxide paste and do some other finishing elements to these. So we'll be back with that phase next. So we're back with the final stage of building our bases and we've got our oxide paste, Elmer's glue, 
and last but not least, we have three different types of gravel here. I'm running a little shy on the middle part of my gravel. I've got tons more, not to worry, but it's more than enough here. So we can see I got a heavy gravel, medium, and then we've got sort of a finer sand. Also has some bark in there. So let's start with gluing together the simplest one. A couple of different ways you could use the Elmer's glue on that, or you can go ahead with super glue. So what we're going to do is get our super glue here. You don't want too much because it will squeeze out over the side. But cork is kind of absorbent. So we're going to lay that down. Got one of my old craft brushes right here. There's a couple things. See, I got some of that Elmer's glue. This is more for, for say, a long-term hold. The super glue kind of holds it in the short term, gives it a little extra strength. See, so we'll put a few dots there. And we're going to stick our piece right on top there. I'm going to set this aside because we've got to work on this edge. And I'll show you a quick way to do that. Let's go to our next piece that has these multiple levels. So what I want to do is make sure I have these two on the base together because I sort of need to mark out. Now my wood or my Elmer's glue is not really going to do a whole lot of good on this part of this. So we're just going to put some dots. That's why I use the cheaper super glue because you end up using a lot of it. And let's make sure that my two pieces are reasonably going to line up together. And do the same thing here. We've got our super glue. And our extra piece that forms our next level. I'm going to get this on here just like we did before. Going to go in with a little bit of our Elmer's glue, a couple dots here. So this is actually pretty fun. I've never really in a video form before been able to do a unit basing. So this is this is a first. This is really fun. So we're going to set this aside so it has a chance to dry. Now we've got the most complicated one. And when you do with this, well, I need to think, how am I going to keep all of these pieces in the place I want it to? So I'm going to leave that one where it is. And actually, I am going to throw in just a little bit of my Elmer's glue here. And actually, it's going to actually kind of mark the place where that other, in case this one gets shifted, I think you'll see once once we throw out a few few dots. So we're going to get our piece on here. I'm going to leave this piece over here. Take these two pieces off. Now I'm going to glue our main one on. See how that just left a little line right there? So now I can pretty much see what I want to glue to. Don't have to mess with any Elmer's glue here. And these two will get them snug up next to each other. I go back to my Elmer's glue. Dot or two of my super glue. Throw this piece in. See how that fills in that potential big gap right there now up here? I'm throw this on. And I need to see just where I want these pieces to go. I like to have actually a little separation here. If they're butted up right next to each other. doesn't really look too much like a broken floor. So let's go with this. See, that's already starting to stick a little bit, but I'm going to make it a little bit stronger because, again, we need some immediate hold. That could potentially be strong enough if I just if I had the luxury of time. But obviously we need to get this going for you a little bit faster here. There we go. Now 
Now when you have a bigger gap like that, that's why we always have these extra pieces out here. I can even do something like this. So I've got my tools handy here. I'm going to break away some of this. And there we go. So it's again, it's another adjustment on the fly. And sometimes you just have to be willing to do that. You have to be willing to kind of go, well, I wanted to do this, but I kind of have to do this. So now we've got pretty tight base. It's pretty well stuck together. Now, remember the oxide paste I was telling you about? It comes in several forms. I think I've also got the brown oxide paste. There's, there's sandy paste. There's at least 13 different kinds, I think, that I've counted. So again, I got my, my old nasty brush here. Got a nice little glob of this right here. So I'm going to change my focus a bit. Right here. Make sure that's, there we go. I think that's about where we want it. We're going to get rid of some of the excess. Now you see we've got this line that goes around here. You can leave that. I mean, that's how I actually used to do these things. But it also it lacks a little support. So this is going to act like it's going to act as a sturdying kind of putty right here. You can see it also has, see how it has some nice body to it. So it holds its shape. And once this is primed, painted, and I took the liberty of priming this one because we're going to be painting these. So you can see now, you just you don't see that line, and even, especially when it's painted, you won't see any of that. Now we've got, especially here, see we've got a big underhang here. So I'm trying to fill that in, making sure that's all filled in. These containers, I've gotten them on Amazon. It's usually where I get them these days, anywhere between, say, 11 to $14 a piece, and they should be prime. Now, uh, yeah, I'll just go all the way around here for right now, but my main objective is just to mask the line between these two. And, it, and it's easier when you do these broken marble-style bases or broken tile style bases so I'm, there we have it now you could leave it like that but that's a little boring so I've got my Elmer's glue here and in a few places I just add a little bit of glue you could potentially just use the oxide paste. You don't necessarily have to do glue, but so I'm going to take a few of these bigger rocks, a few bigger rocks, then I'm going to go with some smaller rocks, and then with my grab, uh, my sand. I think it's, yeah, it's just it's a little more interesting than that. Got a lot more fun shapes going on. You can see that right here. So again, I prime this base so that I can do a quick little paint painting session here for you so you can see how that works. So we're going to fill this in, especially here, where there's just more of the more of the front part of the base showing. It can get a little bit messy. You want to wear a glove, whatever. That's fine. Set this aside. We're going to do the same thing. Now what I usually do is I set out some rocks. And I always start off with the heaviest rocks. First, because this is A, going to look more natural. B, 
it's just going to make your life a lot easier because otherwise you'd have to keep constantly reapplying the glue. So these look more like natural rock falls. When you do this now, you can, in theory, just use sand and it will stick to the oxide paste. So that's, again, that's our simplest one. This one's got a little more complexity to it and it's really what the oxide paste was designed for. Because I've done this with glue, but you'll probably find that glue is just going to sink down into the crevice. It's not see how that has a lot of a lot of shape, a lot of body to it. Now if I ha if I had some of my secret weapon skulls handy, they happen to be in the other room and we're gonna be doing this on other bases too. I could throw a nice little skull in there. That's a handy place for it. But again, we're going to keep this a little bit simpler here. This is the first time that you've ever seen these multiple bases like this. So let's not make it too complex. And I could see, I can even just take the, if I want, take the glue. See, it, it mixes relatively well with the oxide paste. Also, again, gives it a little extra little extra hold. Just grab a little more of our oxide paste back to the glue. Back to the glue here. Get this brush down. We find ourselves a few larger rocks. Set those in, especially over here. See how they're kind of set in, in clusters like that. You may find sometimes that the rocks are going to fall off. It, it happens. happens all the time. It's not that big a deal. Nobody's going to know that there was supposed to be a small, tiny little piece of gravel placed right there. And so I'm just going to work my way around. So I no time at all. We have our second base ready to go. Now it's time for our third, third base. This one's got some large gaps, so this is really where the oxide paste comes in handy. So it's just filling in those gaps, adding that strength that we need, hiding that edge. I'm going to put in a bigger clump here. Even if I want, I can try and sneak some into this area. And like I said, rubbing alcohol will actually clean this oxide paste out of your brush. There's one thing that nothing can clean it out of, though, if it gets on your clothes. And I can say that from experience. If this stuff gets on your clothes or on your carpet. It's there forever. It's now part of your carpet. So... If you like your carpet and your clothes, I would suggest maybe wearing sweatpants or something else while you're doing this. And maybe either have some newspapers down or something along those lines to keep your precious carpet safe. Although most people probably aren't doing their hobby stuff in a carpeted area. Maybe you are. But again, that's a sound precaution to take. Sorry if this keeps disappearing off the screen. Yeah, I can just take this. I can wipe some of that away even. And just like I did before, I've got my larger rocks ready to go here. Larger rocks. I like to shove them into these these gaps here. Let my larger rocks now. My next stage rocks. And I, again, I, I leave myself a space for finally a sand a sand layer.
So there you have it. And let's say I want to push some of these around. I can because guess what? The glue is not dry yet. You can also scrape some of these away with with one of those carving tools. So yeah, I can move things around still. So now we've got ourselves our three bases. And we're all set. So what I'm going to do is sit down and paint this one for you because it's also again part of that planning element that was that I was talking about earlier. So let's catch that final phase of building your bases. We arrive at our final stage of basing and that's painting the bases. If you wanted to you could you could do it as simple as just dry brush gray over these and do some washes over the top you know so that the runes have some darkness to them you get some dark into the crevices here around the base it, if that's if that's all you need you could do red yeah you know, whatever you wanted on your marble slash stone you could do different things I thought for this since there's gonna be kind of more of a warm look to these purples Sienna's gold armor or some kind of copper type armor on these things. I want to try something you haven't seen before. Because you've seen me doing the fluorescent orange like this. I've seen a lot of fluorescent orange. What you really haven't seen me do is messing around with some of the other fluorescents. One of my favorites is green. So what we'll do is make these runic parts be glowing just for the heck of it see how it works and that will be a nice foil to all the warmer tones on here and possibly even allow us to do some little bit of maybe object source lighting on the underside of these not a lot just a little especially I'm also thinking about these big old designs while it would look okay to just be say dark washed into this interior when you see this painted up that that's a, just a huge difference there uh, I think that's really gonna you know our skull here I think I'll put up a reference of my demon base my demon marble bases for my tomb kings army so yeah I think I'll throw up a few examples maybe in the corner as I'm doing this so I've got myself a makeup brush here. It's basically a filbert. And I've got a obviously a collection of my usual craft brushes. So let's start off. Got me some sepia liner here. So I'm gonna start off with some sepia liner. Some brown liner. What's nice about the Sculpey, you don't technically have to prime it. You know, you could prime this tan again and just or gray and just wash over the top of it it depends how much time you have depends what it is you want to get out of this I'm just gonna throw these three out here's a little little set of colors and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start with I got my brown liner and sepia liner mixed together and that's gonna be tough for you to see these first few layers, but that's kind of a, almost a reddish black primer. This takes it off of the reddish black here. And since this is going to need to just dry for a second, I thought I'd take advantage of a little bit of drying time. So here we go. I'm not going to do too much here. I'm just going to. There. And as that dries, I'll show you here on this base. Now, this has not had a chance to dry yet. But you can see even now, it's only had minutes to dry. It's already started to solidify enough. And this is the other thing I want to show you. Here. So see as I drag this over the top. Now we just even just having that gray there already is kind of interesting. Now imagine that's going to be a brighter green. 
So what I'm going to do is go back to this base and we're going to take some of our fluorescent paint. Now I wanted to show you just how thick that is and boy I really hope that the radiance of this can show up on camera because boy it's, it's amazing what this stuff can do now what I will show you is that it's see how translucent that is look at that now you know why I brought out some of these other colors so I think this is what is this reaper mint green something like that. It's, it's basically a sea foam green I'm actually gonna bring out this I think it's it's one of my off whites that maggot white I think is what it's called so see how now this has a little bit more body to it it's a little bit thinner actually speaking of thinner I'm gonna thin it down because remember it's real real thick so let's do this. And the whole idea is here is to get this stuff down into those crevices. But see, look at that. Even now, look at how intense that is. That's really fun. And I think it's going to make the, the unit stand out now. And in, in, in Sigmar, I guess there's it's not like it was in the days of square basing we'll just call it that where you had to deal with magnetizing individual guys on a movement trays and everything else well don't have to worry about that here see look at that in, in no time at all and I could even I could even leave this potentially you know, it, it all depends how much time you want to spend on it I'm just I'm trying to give you options here really that's that's what this is about options that you can say well I think that'll work for me now nah, I just I don't have the time for that or I I just don't want to deal with all that if you, if you look at my blog you can see plenty of examples where all I did was just paint some marble over the top of a flat thing a sculpey Sometimes I just I carved cracks into it. Sometimes I just painted the cracks on because I didn't want to have to deal with sculpting all those cracks. So see, look at this. I kind of wipe this away. And in no time at all, we already have ourselves some glowing runes. But maybe we don't want it to be as intense at the edge as it is everywhere else. So... As my brush goes flying here, I'm going to recover that. And I haven't forgotten around my edge. See what we're doing here. Mixing ourselves a slightly lighter color. I want that to dry a little bit too. And now... So I just love this. It's not a dry brush. There's a ton of paint in there. Let's see, I already say we're starting to lift out some of those stones just bringing out a few of those rocks and you can really see how the edge of where the scopey and our cork mat can't see that edge at all anymore that is just that has disappeared it's gone won't see it at all I can even maybe gently brush over the top here. What that does is it, it even makes that a little bit more fine. But it's, it's not dry enough yet for me to do that. Oh look, you just wipe that away. Normally we're doing this on lots of bases, but this would start to get kind of repetitive. I think we can pretty much see how that's working out but this is the other thing conserve on paint here use it as a primer and look at how this that's what I love about Sculpey see how it just takes the paint Sculpey's pretty absorbent and it makes a really nice uh, I actually like painting on it I've, I've used I've done little murals on, on Sculpey because it can be a nice smooth but yet still absorbent surface so look at that that's a nice 
nice look to that. Let's get this a one stage brighter here. So then I'm just going to work around the edge. But I don't want this to get too greenish. That'll get boring. So here may be one of the colors that we're going to use for our white on when it comes time for the figures. Let's get a little bit of this. It's made in flesh. It's, it's one of my off-whites. I'll use this. See how that lightens that up a little bit. But also, it's not going to be quite as green. See, we got one more. See, I hit a little bit less of stones. And now our runes start to look a little bit brighter here in comparison. You, know, you want to go crazy, you could even use the green stuff, world spiderweb stuff. Who knows? I may try it here. Now, if you're going to use that, that means you're going to have to magnetize your figures and you, you can't put them in foam or something like that. So maybe maybe I might do that with one of these and just show you what that's like. Yeah, this is just a again a cheap makeup brush, and most of them have already kind of done that to me. But a little bit of super glue solves that problem. So I'm gonna get that cleaned out a little bit. Now I'm gonna go to one of my craft brushes here. Got my clear green paint from Reaper Miniatures. So the fluorescents are from from Vallejo. There's magenta, yellow, blue, green, orange. I use all of them. The, the blue is a little bit trickier to work with. I'll, I'll say that. Definitely a little trickier to work with. So let's get a little bit of this out here. Got to make a bit of a wash for us but look at because see the clear green is just once you've watered it down it's translucent and so is so is your fluorescent green and even though that's not completely dry some of these pieces I'm gonna tone down some of those I don't want to do it too much But since it's it's basically a wash, it's going down into those little crevices there where all the runes are. You can always go back in, make it lighter if you want. So in some ways I was kind of hoping it would be wet in some areas because then maybe I could do a little bit of blending. So see here I'm making some parts more intense. Maybe some parts a little brighter, some parts not as bright. You can go in and make these things even more intense. Because I've taken white and mixed it with the fluorescent green. It, it all depends on, on what it is you want to do. This is not some definitive thing. This is how you must use Scopey and the green stuff rollers and everything else. All I'm trying to do here is throw a bunch of ideas at you and then you can decide for yourself which ones will work. You know, this one, what works great for Dark Elves, might not work for Undead. If this, if you want to do this, say, for some kind of corn type army. Well, these runes would probably be glowing red, not green. If it was Zinch or if it was Slanish, they'd be purple. And see how there's just there's a little bit of variety in here. It's not as intense everywhere. And if you want, you can always take a finer brush. And this is our mint green here. Let's grab a little, little bit of that. So now we've got this really, really, really bright version here. 
nice and bright. Got our fine brush and we can pick some areas. I'm gonna make sure it looks like it's in decent focus. So see what I can do is just pick that part, make it even, make it even brighter. This part of the pattern. I don't have to worry about necessarily following within all these lines perfectly because again I can just take some away or when I do that kind of final brushing over the top see I'm just I'm just trying to emphasize a few points here some of these runes so I can make some brighter not gonna make all of them brighter Move a little bit here. And I haven't, this is not white either. I probably could almost make this 5% lighter if I wanted to. I'm going to take some of that away. Make this lighter. So it's light, then a little darker, then dark, then light over here. So it's 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 a little more irregular. And I can see, you know, here I can see places where the original paint just didn't get down in there. So guess what? I can get in here with the brush, strengthen those areas a bit. It may not always perfectly fill in the texture. You know, when you're doing your your rollout of the the texture roller, and that's that's okay because there's gonna be a miniature sitting on top of this. So there we go. We have at it, and one of these guys. Let's say. She's on here. Again, she's going to be covering a fair amount of that. So you don't want the, if you get too crazy with the base, first you've spent a lot of time that you're just going to cover up with a miniature. Second of all, you know, you don't want to get too busy with things. You, you need to let it breathe a little bit. So what I'm going to do, yeah, let's take one of my, See, I can make this into a filbert brush. Look at the edge I've got on that. It's flat. And that's what I've got my gray liner for here. My gray liner. Let's thin it down a little bit. Thin that down a little bit and see what I'm doing is not only am I kind of unifying the floor color, it's also making it a little bit darker. See the striations here? It's going to make some of those go away. It just sort of cleans that up, makes it look a little more solid. It's going to brighten up. See, it makes that even more intense now, the difference between where my light was. And if I feel like things are dry, see, I can just sort of scrape this over the top now. And these runes here, yeah, that's just kind of a... Uh, you can't really see a lot of things. Now look at that. See, I'm just brushing this. It's not a dry brush. This is actually a very liquid paint. You can see how it's, but it's the type of brush. See, it's got that sharp edge, but a large flat surface. This is a good spot here. Right over the top. So this is sort of a faster way to get an interesting effect using your Green stuff roller bases. 
Look at look how this will clean this up here and strengthen this pattern. The other thing it does is see now that you got dark marble, but you got now you have a little bit of a differential there. But even at that point, we can take a little bit of this. This is what I like about the gray liner. I can water it down. I can do a little bit of glaze over the top here, as always. I got my sponges. I can sponge away some of the excess. I can just use my finger if I want. So, how about that you can do whatever you want around the let's just go with a standard maybe just standard black around the rim of the base just to see what it looks like here like so So now that sort of finishes that off. If we want, we can even turn the black into a little bit of a wash here. I'm going to liquefy that even more. Again, I always have a sponge handy. So say that's just too light, I can always knock that down. Now, if you wanted your dirt here to have a little more of a reddish look to it, you can. You know, more of a brownish red. You just take some kind of sienna type of thing, put that in there. I'm just actually darkening down a few parts of the marble there. See, so just darkening down a few edges, maybe leaving some others alone. So let's take this black here. Flatten this out. The same thing. I see how I'm just swiping it over. And see how that makes that even more intense. And you can see the difference. Okay, since this is dry, here, let's. Again, this is about experimentation. This is not about rules and everything else. So we got our gray here. So we're going to do this the opposite way. Let's say you had primed it that color sort of brownish gray and you're going to do this. Sponge time. Now you take some of it away. And let's just, oh, we still have some of this white left. Let's see if I can make some kind of a lighter gray out of it here. So this is what you would have instead. Now you can maybe do something like this. which again it's going to give you a very different look than this. This is kind of your standard here. You know, your dark wash down inside the crevices and lighter over the top. That's probably the quickest way, but then really was this all that much more complicated and did it take that much longer? It's pretty much the same thing. We just did it in reverse. And I like the idea of that because again Uh, we can do a tiny bit of glowing stuff, especially down on this. Uh, maybe it, on the metal parts, if this is going to be metal here, this gauntlet and such. Even on this side, it could be a tiniest touch of hint of that fluorescent green, especially over here. So it's going to give you a little bit of a different look. So I think, I think we've got a pretty solid plan here. We've got our base coat. And this is just Steinol Res primer. 
mostly just the slate blue. Then I think I took the whatever the flesh tone pink or the pink whatever that was, and then mix a little bit of white in with that. So it's kind of like those three layers. You can see a little bit of the slate there. So just the Steino Res primer. That's what we used on all of these to prime them. You can already see, you know, even if it just this has no shading or anything on, like really at all, no highlights. But already it stands out from that base. We've we have a whole different color effect than we have here. We have a cooler color. This is going to be more in the warms. So hopefully this gives you a pretty solid idea of how to approach your basing. And the next episode we're going to get into the shaded base coat on all of our dark elves. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next episode.